Hello and welcome back to Black Bear Forge and your weekly installment of Hook of the Week. This week I thought I would do something really simple. If you read the title you already know what it is and that is hooks made from horseshoe nails. This might sound a little bit silly and a lot of you have done these before but if you haven't this is a really quick and simple way to get a nice elegant lightweight hook. And I'm going to do these in three different sizes. I have horseshoe nails. These are a number five, a number 10, and a number 16 horseshoe nails. These just happen to be Capewell RH16s or RH10s, RH5s, depending on which size nail you're looking at. And these seem to be pretty good nails for doing this with. The tools are pretty simple. We're going to use forge hammer and anvil. Then we're going to use some round nose pliers. You can do these all by hand at the anvil, but I found actually shaping the hooks on this lightweight material cold using the round nose pliers is really a lot simpler. So if you've got round nose pliers, this is a good way to go. If not, like I say, you are welcome to do all the shaping at the anvil, and I did them that way for years before I discovered that it was easier to do cold. So let's head over to the forge. We're going to do the little bit that I actually do in the forge, and then come back to the bench to finish these off. And then I'll talk about pricing for these and what I charge for these, and why I think these aren't a bad little money maker for people who are just starting to sell their work. Now the head of the nail is where the screw or nail to hold this to the wall is going to go. And this is just a classic J-hook with a kind of a round head on it. A lot of people will just flatten these the way they are and let them kind of flare out and retain this shape and that's fine if you like that. I like to try to make them a little bit more round in shape. I just think that's a little bit more refined. And then I like to do a half face blow at the edge of the anvil to create a little transition point there. So that's the first thing we're going to do and that's all we need to do at the anvil. So we're going to start with the bigger nail here and I, I start by just rounding that up a little bit so it's already wanting to be round before I flatten it. And just watch how it spreads and tip your hammer to try and get that round. The more perfect you can make it at the end, the less likely you are to have to do any filing or grinding. But this is fairly thin, so trying to forge it this way to clean it up can cause problems and make it kind of pucker over, so I try not to do that. But that's all we need to do at the anvil. That's the big one. So we'll do the same thing with the number 10 nail. So before it's Holding on to these is the uh, hardest part. So before it's completely thinned out, take time to clean up the roundness if you need to. And even though these are fairly cold, they're pretty soft and not hard to do a little bit more work on down at a really low temperature. Let me do the same thing with the number six nail. The small ones are actually the hardest because they're so small and hard to hold on to. Lose heat fast. They are actually the ones I'm most likely to take a file to because it's kind of tough to get them to spread evenly. But if you need to, take a second heat. Try and clean that up a little bit. I tried making a little jig to flatten these into that would make a perfectly round hole. It didn't work very well. But that's really all the forging we need to do to those. So as I say, that's really all the hot forging that I do to these. I'll probably run them through the forge one more time just to color them. I like to put a little curl on the end, and you can do that cold with this little pair of round nose pliers. I think this pair I got from McMaster Car. They are an industrial supplier, and they don't sell very big ones at McMaster Car, unfortunately. But, but for the little hook, this is really all you need to roll that hook up. Just kind of pay attention to how it's going. It may kink just a little bit if you don't pay close attention, but that's pretty much a hook right there. And I still use this small pair of pliers, and I'm rolling away from my step here 
in this first bend. I hope you can see what I'm doing there well enough. But for these bigger ones, I then go to this pair of pliers. And how big you make the hook in just depends on what you're going to hang on them. I've had people ask these for these with great big ends. They don't hold a lot of weight, but they can still hold something kind of bulky like the, the handle of a basket. But this is so much faster and easier to do with these pliers than it is to try and forge it at the anvil. Perhaps a bit of a cheat, but this is kind of a production thing. I do about two dozen of these an hour if I'm trying to make them as a production item, just to give you an idea. So that's three different sizes of hooks. Now what we need to do is put holes in these. One way to do that is with a handheld punch like this. And this works pretty well in these small ones. You can just kind of line that up like that. And that's all you need to do to put a screw hole in there. And that one, I, wow, did I get that off center. So that's a scrap hook there. That one's not going to be any good. Of course, the hook itself is fine. There's no reason you can't use that. It just looks ugly off center. So these are the kind of things I end up using if I need a little hook around the shop when they come out like that. Now this is probably too thick for this punch. And I'm, going to, I'm going to take this out of the camera view so I can look at it and line it up better trying to do it sideways like this is why I got that one so off center. But if you can view it from the top, you can see whether or not it's centered in there, and it's a lot easier to get that just right. But this one may be too thick. Yeah, see, I can't, I'd have to squeeze that really hard. I might damage the punch trying to do that or actually break the punch of the die. So instead, I will probably drill these. You might be able to use a bolster with a punch cold. Let's, let's try that with this one real quick just for the the sake of it. And that does work and that dries it down into the bolster a little bit so you got to flatten it back out. But drilling is always a good reliable way to do these, or my bench-mounted Whitney punch is a good way to do these, but I know most people don't have one of those. Of course, most of you don't have one of these, but these are available fairly reasonable on eBay to get the, the real Whitney hand punch. Now these are rarely straight after you do all that, just because you've been kind of hand-holding them. So I put them in the vise and I line everything up. Looks pretty good. Now because I did a little bit of filing around the edges and the edge of the hole is now kind of shiny and silver and I want these to all be a uniform finish, I'm going to throw these back in the forge. Usually I'll do a whole batch. I'll do a couple of dozen of each size. Then I just set them on one of my little shovels I use at the forge, stick them in the gas forge, get them up to a dull red, then I bring them out and as they cool I then drop them in a can, put a little paste wax, shake them all up, and we have nicely finished hooks. So I'm going to let those cool off just a little bit before I put them in there. That'll just smoke the wax and won't have any real effect. But as they cool to a black heat, I'll throw them in the can then add a little bit of paste wax. It's probably still just a little bit hot, but kind of gives you the idea. That's more smoke than you would like on these. Well, as they cool, I'll add just a little bit more wax to the can because I suspect I'll burn all this off doing this. If you have a lot of hooks in a big can and you put enough wax in to do this and it's too hot, it might flare up, so don't hold it in your bare hand. Well, that may be a record-setting, quick and simple little video here at Black Bear Forge, but that's sort of the point for these little horseshoe nail hooks. 
They are quick and simple. Like I said, I can do about two dozen of these an hour. If I'm really good, maybe I can do three dozen of these an hour. And because I can do them fairly quickly, and because they're sort of a unique item if you take them to a craft show or something like that, I can sell these for about two or three dollars a piece. The big ones are three, the small ones I think I sell for two, maybe 250 for the medium size. So that isn't a real bad shop rate if you're doing all these by hand, you're not using any big equipment, you're doing a lot of it cold so you're not burning off fuel. They are easier to do in a propane forge than they are in a coal forge because these are really easy to lose in a coal forge, but you can do them, just hold them in a pair of tongs and don't just leave a bunch of them in there. With a propane forge, I put a dozen nails in the forge at one time. I've always got a bunch of them hot. That's one of the reasons I can do so many in an hour. So they're not a bad item for craft shows and things like that. The biggest reason you can't make a fortune making these things is you just can't sell enough of them. There aren't enough people out there that want to buy a hundred hooks from you. Otherwise, you could spend your entire life making horseshoe nail hooks and make a pretty good income. As always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. There's still time to enter the 100,000 subscriber giveaway, so if you head back to that video, which I'll link to at the very end of this video, you can take a chance to enter that giveaway. We haven't actually announced what the prizes are going to be for that yet. So go over to that video, watch it if you haven't already, enter the drawing, only one entry per person, please. And as soon as we have a chance to make the items for the giveaway, we'll know what we're giving away. But as always, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, even if it is something super quick and super simple, it's still a little bit of time in the shop. But be safe, wear your safety glasses, and we will see you for the next one.